Hey guys, this is PJ with the High Mountain Homestead. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to reseed your pasture if you have pasture-raised sheep. This is really important because if you have pasture-raised sheep, the health of your pasture is basically the health of your sheep. So it's really important to get it right. My pasture is looking very thin right now. So you're gonna be joining me today on how I've got a section of it that I'm gonna be reseeding. Okay, before we dive in, let me tell you what we're gonna be talking about. I'm gonna be going over three things. First, how to identify if you have poor pasture. Second, how to select the best cover crop to actually fill your pasture. And then third, how to actually make it happen in a way that you can bank on it working. Because the last thing you want is to spend all that time and money throwing out seed, paying for that new seed, only to find that uh, you don't get a very high germination rate. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Glad to have you along. We're the High Mountain Homestead. We care about better soil, better plants, and better animals. Let's get to it. Let me start this video off by telling you about my dream. My dream is to have good pasture. I want really lush pasture. I want grass that I'm basically wading through. I want to feel like Indiana Jones with a machete going through it. I want really good grass um, because it's going to be really helpful for my sheep. My, my flock is five ewes, so that could be anywhere from you know, five to five to ten or maybe even more uh, lambs each year. And I'm going to need to make sure I've got enough pasture for them so I don't have to buy hay um, except for in the winter time. So it's really important to me to have good pasture as I'm sure it's really important to you. Okay, real quick, I'm sure you know why good pasture is important. So aside from it being the nutrition that your sheep eat, it's also the waste management system for your sheep. So you need to realize that more grass and more, uh, more stuff growing in your pasture requires more of that good stuff uh, from your sheep's droppings. And so the better, the better grass you have, the more grass you have, the more it wants to sequester stuff out of, out of the dropping. So it cycles through the waste faster. Uh, if, you, if you were to take sheep droppings and put them just on raw dirt and then put them on grass, you'll notice that they'll go faster um, on the grass. So that's gonna be really important for your sheep. So when you think about it, you've got the food and the waste management for your sheep. So in a, in a sense, all of the health issues start with making sure that your grass is, is up to snuff. So, let's stop talking about it, let's get to it. Okay, as promised, one of the things that I'm gonna be talking about today is how to, how to look at bad pasture, how to know what bad pasture is. For me, uh, pasture is the food for, for your animals and making sure that there's enough food to go around is always the main concern. So let me show you what, what you don't want. So take a look at what, what we've got here. I can see so much of the ground in between the grass. There's poop, we like that. And most of this is weeds too, look at this. Weeds alone are not a problem for me. Sheep will eat them. If all I've got is weeds, then it's gonna be really hard for new grass and new seeds to grow. I want enough grass to where the grass is outshining the weeds. A good rule of thumb, if you can see this much dirt in between your grass and your grass is this small, uh, it could be time to reseed. The other issue is that uh, my sheep have been on this grass, so that's why it's so short. I don't have a problem with the height. I mean, the sheep have been on it. Um, I'm really looking forward to really lush grass, and let me show you what I have in mind for that. So this is more what I'm talking about. I don't actually know the type of this grass. We do have a lot of dandelions in there. I don't know the type of this grass, but whatever this is, it's over there as well. Um, it's reaching maturity because you can see, even at this height, this is maybe nine inches, maybe a foot off the ground. Um, it's starting to seed already which means it's likely reaching its, its main height. So that's a fine height. I'm not disappointed with, you know, nine, 10 inch grass, but um, I have some fescue that I wanna put out there and so tall fescue can grow three to four feet. So I'm really looking forward to seeing taller grass out there as well. As you can imagine, taller grass lasts longer. And in the autumn, you can cut it down and use it as feed in the winter for your sheep. 
Okay, in a second, I'm actually gonna show you the mixture that I'm using, but before I do, I wanted to call out the fact that do your research, figure out what is going to grow well in your area. It is so much more worth it to do the research up front than it is to fight an uphill battle trying to get something that is expensive and not gonna grow in your area, so just do a little bit of homework first. Another piece is don't overdo it on legumes in your in your pasture, like don't overdo it on alfalfa. A lot of people say 40% legumes is as high as you want to go, and even that feels a little high to me. I kind of go more 70-30. Here, I already have, this is all grass. There is no, there are no legumes in the pasture right now, so anything I put out there is, is going to be helpful, but I still want to respect the fact that I don't want too rich of ground, um, especially later in the season, might cause bloat or something like that. So respect the fact that your sheep don't need 100% uh, legumes in their pasture. And then remember that variety is the spice of life. Your sheep will be happier when they have a lot of stuff to choose from. Sheep, despite eating grass, are actually very picky animals. You'll notice, like I do, that that they have their favorite spots, their favorite grasses. So give them variety. It helps other grasses grow back up, just like humans. I mean, um, there's a lot of studies that show that uh, uh, there's, there's benefits to be had with metabolic diversity. It helps when humans are eating a, a, a plethora of vegetables because that adds a lot more flora into our gut, which helps our gut become healthier. The same thing with sheep. Maybe even more important with sheep because the rumen does so much for the digestion process. You want to introduce a lot of variety uh, into the rumen. Uh, caveat, there are variety that makes sense for them. Obviously, we're not giving them, uh, you know, things that we don't want sheep to eat. But variety for sheep, very good. Okay, let's talk about what we're actually working with today. This is a pasture grass that resembles a tall fescue. So at maturity, it should grow at least three feet high. This is some uh, alfalfa that I had from another project that's left over, so I'll be mixing a little bit of this in there. And then this is a mixed clover. Uh, I've got some red and some white clover in there. Uh, so I've got my two legumes and my, my base grass. Again, I'm not, normally um, I'd want a little bit more diversity, but since I already have grass on the ground with some level of diversity in it, I'm not too concerned about that. Um, only working with these threes. Again, if I was completely seeding a whole new pasture, I'd probably buy one of those mixes from, from your tractor supply type store that, that comes with a great mix. Okay, so it's not rocket science, guys. Um, I've got, got my grass, my clover, my alfalfa in there. Uh, it feels like about a uh, 60 40 maybe a 70 30 mixture of, of grass to to legumes which is great primarily I just want better grass out here um, even if it was just hundred percent grass it would be a lot better than the situation I have now um, so I'm happy I'm happy to be able to have grass and the alfalfa and clover to, to throw into the mix as well now this makes life a whole lot easier in a situation like this is it mandatory no but having a seed spreader, I think this is actually built for fertilizer, but I can use it for seed. Uh, having it out for something like this makes the job a whole lot easier. So before you pour the seed mixture in there, you just wanna make sure there's some valves in there. You wanna make sure that the valves are closed so your seed's not just spilling on the ground. Um, I've, I've made sure that's the case, so I'm gonna pour these in there. And before I start reseeding, I wanna show you um, something that you can do to make sure that your reseeding efforts go a long way. What? I'm just going to top it off with a little bit of clover. We're going to get bees next year and I think they'll appreciate having some clover out here. There are two ways to do this next part. You can either just start spreading your seed out or if you want to give yourself a little bit of insurance it will take more work and maybe some more money if you don't have topsoil lying around. But that is find the really bare parts and lay some topsoil. I'm going to show you what that looks like in the end product. Actually, as I'm walking over to my end product, you can see I've got all these mounds here of topsoil that I've been hauling back to the pasture. My neighbors have their sprinklers going today, which is nice. So 
down here this is all fresh topsoil this was just totally bare by these trees so having this topsoil down is really going to help ensure that the seeds actually take on grass like that over there so before I start spreading seed uh, I'm gonna take this rake and basically just rake out these mounds uh, to look flush this bare spot really needs it as you can see just really really dry compacted soil we've only lived in this property for six months but something that has been a real challenge is the compacted soil that's in our pasture the people that lived here before us would drive their truck and park their truck on the pasture pretty often and so that uh, that takes its toll on the pasture so a lot of the reason I have to lay this stuff is because the pasture is very compacted all right yeah back over here so this is uh this is kind of the barn run area some of it's great we recently just cut down there were three trees right there we're actually reseeding this area it's going pretty good you can see some green happening that stuff was planted only a week ago it's already coming up see it over there but uh, we get sunlight here now not this time of day but uh, we get sunlight here so I kind of want to spread some more soil and reseed back here as well All right, so I've got all these mounds of dirt back here. Um, I'm gonna just take the rake and start evening out and getting some fresher topsoil. So when I plant the seeds, there's actually a place for the seeds to fall. And now comes the part that we all care about, the actual seeding of the pasture. Uh, to spare you the half an hour it will take to actually film this, I will just tell you what I'm going to do. So I'm probably going to start off making sure I get the spots that have a good soil base um, first, because that's where it's guaranteed to grow the best. And then I'm just going to work my way out from there. I'm going to put the uh, seed spinner area on its lowest setting to start with just to make sure I can cover the whole area and then once I'm done I'm going to uh, maybe take some by hand and spread it by spread it by hand the important thing to note throughout this is that uh, I, I have to rake a lot of it over again obviously the area like this where there is no uh, uh, fresh topsoil there's no real point in raking it because there's nothing to put on top of it but in those areas uh, I will be raking it again so it it's good to start with a with a wide uh, spread of seeds but it's also important to just realize that uh, it's not going to be perfect because you're gonna rake over it again anyway to make sure the seeds have a little bit of coverage okay look at that we got water on it now so what I did is I spread all the seeds out uh, the, the areas where there was a lot of soil I raked it up to to get the seeds incorporated with the soil and put a sprinkler on it. So my goal right now is to sprinkler it uh, probably twice a day given the range of the sprinkler and, uh, and how much area it's covering. My goal is to uh, make sure it is kind of babied until it's at least two inches tall, the grass at least. I'm not sure about clover or alfalfa, uh, but making sure it's that tall will make sure, you know, it just has a there's a better chance of living to adulthood. And the other thing that is probably obvious when dealing with this kind of stuff is making sure that your sheep are not on the pasture. So I've got my sheep all back here. My fence isn't, it's not turned on or else she wouldn't be that close to it. Um, I just haven't gotten around to that yet today. But uh, we've got the, got the sheep over on that side. Bare minimum, two to three weeks, like bare minimum. 
I am going to try to hold out as long as I can uh, by going a full month without them back here. Wow. So I've got all this. We have some, if you can't tell, we've got trees that just came down. Um, but the sheep love to eat the leaves, so that's great. It gives them like an extra source of food while I've sectioned off this part of the pasture. And that should be, that should help them. But I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure they are not on this uh, spot of pasture for at least uh, three weeks. Again, a month is gonna be a whole lot better. The reason why is because I don't want them pulling up the roots of the new seeds. I want the seeds to be able to take good root before the sheep are, are on top of it, eating at it. So they're gonna be back here. I've got kind of like a half paddock over there. My front line about every two weeks is good enough to hold the sheep for about a week. So, uh, so that'll be great. I can keep the sheep back here. And off of this grass, I've definitely got enough space for them besides where I've just seeded. All right, and that's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you took something away from this. If, if you know more about this than I do, which is most of you, I would bet, uh, let me know what your tips are. Uh, what, what grasses do you like? What takes root really well? Where do you like to plant? What time of year do you like to plant? Do you have any tips on irrigation and water uh, during that time? Let me know. Those are the kind of things that I'm really interested in. Um, so I can, I can implement it here. Again, thank you for watching. If you're new to this channel, if this stuff seems up your alley, please subscribe. We drop videos at least once a week on this channel and I would love to see more of you. Until next time, I'm PJ with the High Mountain Homestead. I'll see you on the next video.